I lived on uh, Karmi Road in Titarangi, um, on a three quarters of an acre of bush, and grew up there when you know, I was a kid in the 1950s and 60s. And we had this very long, long drive, and beautiful, um, beautiful bush, and my parents gardened and had amazing kind of little um, uh, secret gardens, really, through the bush. With my dad grew tropical flowers, he was Australian, and so he had a bit of a Australia in the bush there with bright coloured flowers, reds and oranges. And um, with the neighbours, or neighbours all around, although we couldn't see them, they were there, um, people, so, uh, kids similar in age, we'd spend a lot of time and weekends playing go home, stay home. And we had a tree in the drive, um, a big totra would be home. And so we'd have to climb the tree and stay there until we were released. And my favourite place to hide was on a big karaka tree. Uh, well, there were several karaka trees. I couldn't always be in the same one, otherwise I'd have been found. And um, wood pigeons would come crashing through the trees and eating the berries. And so I'd be lying on branches trying to be as um, discreet as possible so, or camouflaged as possible so people wouldn't see me. And um, so there was that kind of dappled light. You'd have all the, the canopy of the tree and the greens and then light sort of coming through. So I'd spend, you know, sometimes I'd spend an hour or two up there. <laughs> and so there's lots of, like, kind of really beautiful, secretive, um, but also strange and at night quite a little bit frightening. And so with a lot of the works that I'm exploring do have that. There's sort of a romance but also some little unsettling. And it was a different life then, I think. A tittering was kind of different. Um, and there was a coffee bar called the Pattersons, and that was very groovy, and I was always very intrigued by it. But I was just a young kid. It was had a bamboo curtain, and um, I used to kind of tangle myself up in it sometimes. It was long and narrow, behind the curtain, long and narrow, and it was always this amazing smell of fresh coffee and poppy seed plaited bread and the woman behind the counter had her hair kind of whirled up in this black bun and really high and she was like slim and amazing. And then from there lots of artists and poets and musicians would hang out there and was always, always wondered what was, went on down below because they would kind of disappear into this black hole down these stairs and that was the folk club down there and, and then they'd have kind of sessions poetry and, um, and lots of more, lots of the guys would wear the dark fisherman's jumpers. Um, but also outside on the, on the pavement, uh, Colin McCann was selling his paintings uh, very cheaply, just sort of laid out on the, <laughs> on the footpath and propped up against the, the, uh, the shops. And, you know, it was like, um, yeah, it was very interesting. I, mean, I went back again recently and just looking at kind of rocks on the Manuka Harbour and things that he would have looked at. And we, he was at Titterangi, uh, sorry, French Bay, and we, I spent all our, we spent all our summers on French Bay Beach. And, and so, yeah, there's definitely references. And when I saw the exhibition um, that Julia Waite put on at uh, the Auckland Art Gallery called um, well, Freedom of Structure, the Cubism 1930s to the 1960s, it was almost like an epiphany, seeing his work and others. And I thought, oh, actually, yes, that's my, my work feels very much like that too. I'm interested in the kind of um, the structure of these things that the freedom was in. And um, also, uh, Lynn Castle was, used to go to his place and mum would buy pottery and mum did a bit of pottery as well. And he had you know, quite a Japanese influence. And so there's a kind of a contemplation that I'm interested in and his his line work and textures. And it was, uh, as you approach Chitarangi, you go, turn left to go up Rangawai Road and then left again up another drive. And you go right around through the bush up this hill and on top was this really lovely villa and very bushy with a grass tennis court and uh, crabapple trees. It was like a paradise. So mum and dad and people would play tennis and um, we'd drink like the non-alcoholic punch <laughs> and there would be glowworm caves and uh, their son would give us apples, sort of um, these red apples and he'd bit into them and it'd be beautiful pink blush through the flesh 
And so it was like, it was quite extraordinary. And, and they had lots of places to explore. And um, in the summer too, they'd have like a little fair and I would dress up my trike with crepe paper <laughs> and we'd all go around, these, around the tennis court and it was a competition for who had the best, best bike. Um, so yeah, there's lots of delights, um, really quite amazing. The one, one painting, as I mentioned before, my, my mum's a, a Renoir, not an original, but had lost all its colour, all the pinks, reds, and so there were just the yellows, greens, and dark colours left. And so I've, I have works that have that same sort of feel. It's quite, quite extraordinary. Um, those um, glimpses of, of memories and, and so with the exhibition, I've thought, you know, we spent a lot of time at the Cascade Falls out at, and out at Pihar and under waterfalls and, and that uh, dense bush, fresh water, dark green. Once again, you're not quite sure if there well, are eels in there. Are you going to get bitten by an eel or whatever? Um, that sort of fresh feel. And so I've made larger scale works that have more of a... Um, kind of body connection with that sense of that fresh and the dark. And the glass bead of works are more like the memories of, of, of kind of memories of things, um, glimpses into, you know, like references to paintings or, or the light in the bush or the Lacan or, or you know, just sort of other influences and experiences. Mm. And so they kind of uh, remind me of something, so it could be a view from above. One of them is quite golden, and it feels like looking down. There was a bit of gorse and gorse and bush, and it feels like looking down over the hills, roads, the topography of hills, and bright roofs kind of reflected in the bush. Um, and there's another one called, at this stage, called. Indian summer, because there was one time in March, I remember one year when we were at primary school, it was so, so hot that the playground melted and it was actually <laughs> pools of tar everywhere. And going home, there was pools of tar. We were always fascinated. And we'd come home with tar all over ourselves. And um, then we'd have to sit to work with getting it off of butter. <laughs> um, so it was kind of, some of them, I can actually feel the heat so there's some that are cool and some that are warm and kind of um, enveloping. Mm.